Greetings, church. The Lord be with you. We continue still yet in days of green growing time, a time now to put down strong roots and to be grounded in prayer and in God's word. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Once again this Sunday, I'm, I'm wandering a little bit from what is uh, uh, ordered uh, in the regular order of things. Not that kind of order, just what's in the regular order of things. Today, in our regular order of readings, we would normally be reading um, a, a story from Matthew that is very familiar to you. It is a story about paying taxes and Jesus asking for a coin and then saying whose head is on the coin and pay taxes to what a, give to God what is God and give to Caesar what is Caesar. You know that one. But there's another story in Matthew about Jesus and taxes. And it is never included in the order of things. We never get to hear this story. And I thought, today might be a good day to hear a new story, a different story, a fun story. And so this is from the Gospel of Matthew. This is the 17th chapter. And let me just tell you a little bit about the 17th chapter. It begins with Jesus taking Peter, James, and John up to a mountain where he is then transfigured with Elijah and Moses. He comes down off of the mountain and he cures a boy who has a demon. And then, after all of those things, he says to his disciples, as they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is going to be handed over into human hands and they will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised. And they were greatly distressed. As we are walking towards the cross in these green growing days, we hear these words, this truth, that, what, that in order for life there must be death. But it's so hard to hear that at this point. In the midst of this amazing time of healing, and identity, Jesus says, this is what the healing and identity is for. It is for life. It is for your life. But these are hard and heavy and imponderable things. So the very next story, after he says they were greatly distressed, is this. This is the 24th verse. When they reached Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? And he says, well, yes, he does. And when he had come home, Jesus spoke of it first, asking, what do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth take toll or tribute? From their children or from others? When Peter said, from others, Jesus said to him, then the children are free. However, so that we do not give offense to them, go to the lake and cast a hook. Take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you'll find a coin. Take that coin and give it to them for you and for me. This is the gospel of our Lord. This is a odd and quirky little story where Jesus is not in conflict directly yet with the people in, in the temple, with the leaders. It's still early on, and again, it's still about identity and healing. But there's a couple of wonderful things in this 
in this story. First of all, that they're in Peter's home, and he's Simon still at this point. He's Simon, that first called apostle, a fisher, who Jesus says, you'll become a fisher of men. It's his home. And we know he was married because in one gospel, Jesus heals his mother-in-law, Simon's mother-in-law. So for all of the times that we envision Jesus and this band of people, these crowds of people walking on the road, going from place to place, the fact that they actually spend a little time in Simon's home, that they could just be in a place to relax after all these mountaintop experiences and healings, that Jesus might just have, I don't know, a few days off just to be comfortable and homey, home. And for all of us who have been home for so long these days, I hope it gives us a little bit of an appreciation that we have these, these places, these homes that have become our sanctuaries, our safe places, our workplaces, our schools, that these, these rooms, these couches, these tables, that we have them and they're familiar and they're warm and they're homey and we are blessed. And how blessed in the midst of all of the stories that are going to continue to happen to Jesus that he gets to spend a few days visiting a friend's home. I don't think we should overlook that in the story of Jesus. That for as much as we hear about Jesus' hospitality, how he feeds people, how he invites people, how he welcomes people, that there are those who can do that for him as well. Jesus, come into my home. Sit down. Have a meal. Let me wash your feet. Don't worry. Just be here. You want to tell stories? You know, just, just to be. We always expect Jesus to be on doing something, something that we're supposed to pay deep attention to. But Jesus is just hanging out after hard and important things. He's just in Simon's home, and I think that matters. Pay attention to that, that Jesus, too, can rest can relax, can laugh with friends. Because I think that he tells this great joke, right? This temple tax that every Jew, every Jewish man over a certain age was expected to pay to support the temple in Jerusalem. And everybody just, you paid so much. And so the question was, well, does G, is Jesus going to pay this? Well, he's probably been paying it for a decade anyway, right? It's just an assumed thing. You pay to support the temple. So there's you know people trying to ask about this. Is he going to pay the tax or isn't he? Simon's like, well, of course he's going to pay the tax. That's what you do. You pay the tax. So there's no controversy here. Why are they stirring up something out of nothing at this moment? So... You know, Jesus knows that this is going on. And he says to Simon, I just kind of have this question about who pays taxes. So when the emperor puts out a tax, who pays that tax? Do you think he taxes his own children? Or does he tax other people's children? And everybody knows the answer to that. You know, you get your taxes from them. You don't get your taxes from us. We don't pay taxes. We need tribute and taxes from, you know, them. And so Jesus says, 
Who are we? We're the children of God. There is nothing that we can pay, nothing we have to pay to earn the gifts that God has given us. Because the taxes that the emperor brought in did pay for armies and roads and schools and, and things that people did need for society, mostly, as well as to enrich himself. But, you know, there was societal good that was done with taxes. Jesus says that societal good, it does not come at a monetary cost. You can't buy God's grace or love or mercy. So the children are free. You do not have to pay. You are not those others. You are the children of God. And there is no tax that you have to pay for the gifts of God. There's not a price that you could meet for the gifts of God. And so a very important claim is being made here early in this gospel that there are gifts that God is giving you as king, as sovereign, that you don't have to pay a tax for. God's gifts are free. So how lovely. Jesus can rest in a friend's home in the midst of, you know, some light back and forth. He can say, by the way, I'm going to teach you this really important thing now. But because it is in a friend's home, he can also say, so here's what we're going to do. You know that thing I told you about, you're going to be a fisher of men? Go back. Go be a fisherman for a while. Go catch a fish. They want their tax. We'll give them their tax. I'm sure it'll be in the mouth of a fish. But it doesn't say then that Peter went and did it and paid the tax. I can just see them, you know, sitting around this table, reclining on pillows, drinking wine. It's like, they want their tax? Let's go fishing. Let's find a fish with the money in it. I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> I can just see it being fun. Silly. Memorable, because it's, it got written down. But often overlooked, because we don't incorporate it into our order of readings. So let's not overlook it today. Today... Let's rejoice that Jesus can relax in a friend's home, that we have homes that someday we will be able to invite one another into, but we can always invite Jesus into any day, any time, in safety and in joy. That we can remember that as children of God, God requires no payment, no tax for his gifts. And that sometimes Jesus can tell really funny stories, and we should enjoy that. I hope, my friends, that you laugh, that you celebrate your hominess, and that you rejoice that all that God has given to you is free. May you revel in those free gifts of forgiveness, of life, of love, of mercy, and of joy. May you know these blessings freely and richly Know that you are loved. Know that you are missed. Know that we are church, together, apart. God bless you all, 
and hear these words of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.